Hi, welcome back. Uh, we're live on Twitch.tv from the AWS Summit here in New York. And uh, you could say we've saved the best till last. So I'm delighted to be joined by Adrian Kirkcroft, uh, VP for Cloud Architecture Strategy at AWS, who you might remember was this morning's keynote presenter. Uh, and I've got a few questions for Adrian, like I've had a few questions for the people that have joined us here on Twitch.tv slash AWS throughout the day. So. First question I've got for you, Adrian, is you're still pretty new to uh, to AWS. You said in the keynote that you'd been here just under a year. Yep. Presumably, it feels like longer than that. It certainly feels like longer than the the time that I've been here. So, what have you been uh, What have you been working on since you joined AWS at the end of 2016? Yeah. Well, it's uh, partly it feels like a long time because I've been working with AWS since 2009. Yep. And uh, spent a lot of time. I've been all the reinvent. So you know, it's just kind of like coming home to some extent, <laughs> and I know so many people in the organization when I joined. I joined last October, and I really have a, a couple of jobs, two different things. One is the reInvent re and all the summits, and doing keynotes, and spending a lot of time with customers. And I'm talking to customers about what they're doing next, um, the people that are push, you know, the all-in customers, the people pushing our boundaries, playing with the Beta, release and beta versions of new things. Yep. So I'm trying to concentrate on those customers. You know, From my time at Netflix, it was like customers that are doing the kind of things Netflix are doing. And then the keynote today I mentioned, you know, Capital One ended on them. Spent a lot of time with them in the last few years. They are one of the customers that is pushing AWS to, be, to build out the things we need to, be, to build a bank on the cloud. Yep. And so there are many other customers like Expedia, what does it take to build a travel company that runs on the cloud? So those are the most, those are customers I'm focused on. Talk to all, everybody else, obviously. The other side of it, uh, building a team. Always a fun problem to solve for, or something you know well. <laughs> yep, and yep. Um, so I'm building a team to be the open source community engagement team for AWS. Mm -hmm. It's something where it's been, something we've been doing for a long time. There's lots of contributions to open source from AWS, but it was not really the responsibility of one team to go and engage with the ecosystems and, e and communities and to explain what we were doing. So it's happening piecemeal. Mm -hmm. And when you've got, it's sort of not everyone's day job to be doing this, you tend to get this sort of, well, it's piece, you know, some people are really good at it, other people would do more. And what we're doing is gathering together everybody into you know, one way of working, uh, acting as a focal point for communities that want to engage with, a, with AWS about an open source project. Yep. And then I'm hiring people who are experts and are from that community. We were, we were at OzCon a few months ago. We helped sponsor it and we were talking to lots of people, hired a few people that we met there. And uh, that's the kind of a uh, crowd that, that I'm building that Good. we can then go and you know, find interesting projects, help them be successful, help customers be successful with open source, and you know, help, yeah. help AWS engineering in particular uh, run open source projects better. So let's return to that in a second. I think I saw you at Stockholm this year, maybe in mm -hmm. Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. uh, certainly here and maybe in London. So you've been around a lot of the summits that I've been at over the course of the summer. It's a bit of a crazy period to be here, but what's been your highlight of visiting all of these cities as an AWS team member now? What's the coolest customer that you've met or your favorite launch yeah. that you've seen over the course of the summer maybe? So this is the eighth summit I've done. <laughs> so they started me off gently. Uh, I kind of, I was at the uh, Sydney Summit, which Werner did, that was the first one for this year. So yep. I just followed him around. Okay, how do you do this? Uh, that was interesting. And then the first summit I did myself was uh, Singapore, uh, the week later. And then, you know, been working through, I did some in Asia. So there was a couple of things are really interesting. The summits in Asia, we have a huge number of new customers. Yep. You know, AWS is a new thing. Maybe two thirds of the people are barely using or don't use AWS. And so it's really, this is all the stuff we do. How do we not overwhelm people and still explain this is the big picture. So we kind of cover everything, try and show how it fits together uh, for, for everybody there. Uh, and that, you know, Kuala Lumpur and uh, in particular, and, and Bangkok, very emerging markets. Yep. They're growing like crazy. The summits were maxed out. We're, we're like the biggest technical conference in the city, in, in the country, in, in some extent, so some places now. So that was cool, going and uh, meeting lots of brand new customers. 
And then this one, this is the first time I've actually done a product announcement, like a new thing. Yep. Right, so I got to do the migration hub and some of the security tools that came out today. And um, this is a much bigger production, <laughs> and there's a lot more going on, <laughs> and there's a lot more people involved in putting it together, so the whole process is more involved. Yep. A, you know, Stockholm was easy as me and Adrian Hornsby, the two Adrians, we just, he went <laughs> did the slides, we did it, it was fine. Uh, Tel Aviv again, it was a very startup audience, so I, really, I, I went off onto really a different script, mostly the same slides, but I said, this is the open source, ver sorry, no, this is the startup version. Like if you're a startup and you're interested in how to, what you should be doing with AWS, you should probably go find the video of my Tel Aviv summit, because it's a very, yeah, I think it maybe, is the startup Maybe nation. something that uh, customers that might only come to one of these events yeah. don't realize is that the different summits in different parts yeah. of the world have a very different feel to them, Tel yeah. Aviv. Particularly, I've done that a few times myself. It's really distinctive and not really like any other AWS event worldwide, with the exception yep. maybe of parts of reInvent, you yep. know, which have a similar sort of feel. And maybe we'll return to that a little bit later. So, the other thing that you talked about there in your discussion of things you've been working on was, was open source at AWS. And you mentioned uh, growing your team. You also said before that that open source was not new to AWS, but more mm -hmm. that you were pulling it together. So can you talk about some of the significant open source projects here at Amazon Web Services and, and what the longer term plans are for, for open source at AWS now that, you're, now that you're leading that team? Yeah, well over the last, uh, I've got a graph somewhere, but basically the contributions that AWS has made to open source is increasing exponentially. Like every year it's growing it's accelerating, yep. right? So, and we've been doing it for a number of years. I think that we still have, we have some groups that are contributing very well. The, the EMR team in particular, Elastic MapReduce, there's a lot of projects that are around the Hadoop ecosystem, right? Or, um, Hadoop, HBase, Spark, Presto, all of those things. We've, we are continually upgrading those projects, we're continually making contributions. We run a very recent build, so if, you're, if you want to run a, you know, some of the more some of the big um, big data vendors do a relatively infrequent patch release or yep. a release update. We're a very uh, fresh update, and we're always contributing those things back and some some features as well, mm -hmm. like auto scaling your EMR cluster up and down yep. is something. The code to do that was contributed back. So it's a fairly significant uh, contributions from that team. Um, and then in the whole container ecosystem, we've been contributing. Uh, we're members of the, let me think, uh, uh, we just joined the CNCF, we'll talk a bit more about that later, but we have done the, which is it? CNI we're contributing to. Um, Contenity. Trying to remember all the, trying to remember, all the, there's yeah. lots of different pieces there. I'll try, I, name escapes me, but we've been making, there's Container D and then there's another one. Uh, but a bunch of contributions there where we've been Engaging with the Docker container ecosystem, we built our DCS, we built our own block space project to, to have our own scheduler and give yep. you a better way to interface to ECS. So, lots of contributions there as well. So you mentioned CNCF there, uh, and I recall an announcement last week that mm -hmm. came out saying that we joined the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. For the benefit of people that might be watching the stream that might not be familiar with CNCF, can you talk a little bit more about about what that is, uh, and also why it's important to AWS to be involved in initiatives like that more generally, but CNCS specifically. Yeah, so the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is a, a loose collection of projects. It's about 10 projects currently with some more incubating, and they don't form a, a single platform that's the, that you use as one thing. It's, it, it's sort of, this is the stuff that's interesting for building microservices based projects, mm -hmm. pr products and, and, and applications. Um, it was formed around Kubernetes, it's a container scheduler. There's also um, things like uh, gRPC for serialization, uh, Linkerd for um, CNI for networking. There's like, 10 different projects there. And it's a, a group which now really has everybody working together. Uh, all the major cloud vendors, some customers, most of the vendors in this space. And we're working to figure out how to, really to explain to enterprises how you build cloud native applications. And what I mean by cloud native, so if you think about 
in the old days when it took you weeks or months to get a machine. Yep. Even if it was a VM, it would take you ages to get it. You'd hold on to that machine. You wouldn't give it back because it took you it months took you to weeks get it. To get another one. So yeah. when you went and you used you know, Puppet <laughs> or Chef to update it and put new stuff on it, yep. and you'd accord this bunch of machines and re repurpose them. But when a machine takes seconds or minutes, so seconds yeah. for a container, minutes for an instance to create, you can just give them back. Yeah. You're on much higher utilization. So the whole idea that your applications are elastic and they're provisioned on demand and the, the basic principle is that they're, they're immutable code. You do a build and the outcome of the build is a machine that's yeah. running. And if you want to update that code, you make a new machine and you run that. And this is something that uh, Netflix pioneered with Netflix OSS, yep. and it's something that Docker picked up as a pattern. It's a little controversial at times. We're saying, no, you're not doing this wrong. You're, you're supposed to using, you know, you're supposed to using Puppet and Chef to create your infrastructure. And yep. no, no, so we can just build let's make stuff it disposable and run and it. Throw it away when we yeah, we use the autoscaler, yeah. or you, or you use ECS or Kubernetes or something to run your containers. And what you're basically running is immutable objects that you've created and you have all the right versions of them and you can roll back easily because you'd say, oh, let's just use the previous version yep. if this one didn't work. So you get these uh, blue-green pushes where you upgrade a new version alongside the old version, run them side by side for a bit before you remove the old one. Makes it much easier to roll fat backwards and forwards and gives you a, a much better uh, development velocity for building things and rolling them out really quickly and safely. Yep. Yep. So with our work with uh, CNCF, how might projects like that and other similar projects impact the way in which developers use AWS? Will we be developing new tooling that makes it easier for developers to use those projects on AWS? Will there be interfaces between our ECS service and some of these other components? Is this the kind of improvements that we're talking about making to the developer experience? Yeah, I think we're, what we'll see is that all of these products are gradually migrating towards a fairly common set of capabilities. Uh, ECS runs at huge scale. Most people don't realize just how big it is. Yeah. Uh, it's an enormous service. We're running very large clusters on it. It's been running in production for a long time yeah. at, at massive scale. And it's, it's, if you're all in on AWS, you know, it's fully integrated with all the other AWS capabilities. But then we look at Kubernetes, which has some nice use interfaces, some nice developer capabilities, yeah. and it may be a little easier to use, easier to get started with if you're just playing around on your laptop. And so we're adopting some of those ideas. We'll be sharing the CNI, the, the container network interface uh, in future. So there's a few places where we can just learn ideas and bring them into ECS. And then if we look at Kubernetes itself, um, it's a little tricky to install. There's lots of moving parts. And some people run it and they go, no, this is too complicated. Yeah. I'm just going to go and do it for us, which is uh, we'll run ECS and make it easy. Um, and I think we, uh, there was, we made a list of all the different installers for Kubernetes on AWS. We got to 15 and I think we found <laughs> a few more of them. So uh, Arun Gupta from my team started blogging about, okay, here's, Here's one, here's Kube Control. Yeah. This is yeah. how this works. 15 and posts to come. <laughs> there, I don't think he's going to do all 15. <laughs> but he's going, okay, here's the main ones you should be looking at so you can compare what is the difference between these different installers. Yep. And we're just going to start, we're going to start contributing back to fix some of these places where we want to make uh, AWS work better with some of these installers. Yeah. So and simplify some the experience. It's, there's, just the whole, easier, yeah. there's just some places where it's uh, more complicated than it should be. And as we evolve ECS to become more like Kubernetes in some sense and to have more, even more scale, we get to kind of influence the Kubernetes stream by being on the inside of that, that group. So by joining CNCF, we get the ability to have that conversation. We think it should do this and have that discussion and work with them on making it just all work much more interoperability. Great. Make it more interoperable for customers. Excellent, so we're getting close to running out of time. So this is almost the end of AWS Summit season. I think there's one more to come in Madrid yeah, at the end I'm of September. Madrid. I'll see you there. Yeah. Uh, after that, obviously, we're starting with reInvent. So what are your plans for, plans for AWS reInvent? I think last year you just joined at that point. Joined, you opened yeah. the community day for us on the first day of the event yeah. on the Monday, which we're running again this year, a bigger and better community event at AWS reInvent, but what else will you be, will you be do, doing um, during reInvent, reInvent week? I, we're still figuring out all of the speaking plans, so I don't, I don't have a, a good answer for that. The, 
most interesting thing is something else, I can't tell you really everything about it yet, but we're, we're looking at a really interesting hackathon uh, with a lot of uh, machine learning in there. So if you come along, probably Monday and Tuesday. So we're, some really interesting stuff coming together there where we're going to have uh, some competitions and we're going to have people building up, uh, building and training some models and Great. figuring out what they are, who can have the best one. Fantastic, so, excellent. And, uh, don't think I can talk, tell you publicly about it, but <laughs> when we get something going uh, on that, we'll definitely do, uh, be on Twitch TV and so sh talking all about that. We'll be, we'll be drumming up entrance pretty soon, but we just got to get a few more things lined up before we can really go Good into stuff. it. Good stuff. So if you're interested in more about reInvent, uh, visit the reInvent website. It's reInvent.awsevents.com. Uh, I think we'll wrap up this segment there. Thank you very Thank much you. for joining us, Thank Adrian. You. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you in Madrid. And All thank right. you. Thanks very much. See Cheers. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.